YouTube. And yes, since I'm streaming this on YouTube, uh, that this that that line actually makes sense. I am Pinstar, and this is Crusader Kings Three. Oh man! So one thing, one one great mystery, and this is a this is a question I've been asking myself: is why the Sam heck did I never do anything with Crusader Kings Two? I have over 600 hours on that game. I love it. Um, but I don't know why I never did a series on it. Uh, but then Crusader Kings 3 comes along, and I'm like, okay, I ain't gonna make that same mistake. We are diving into this head first. Um, and I am so excited. Uh, Paradox provided me with a key about a week early. Um, thank you very much to Paradox uh, for that uh, press key. Uh, so I've gotten my, uh, my hands on it. Uh, I am not necessarily at strategy and tactics level of uh, mastery here, but I, I, I know more than the tutorial. So I will be taking you guys for a little bit of a ride Count here. Lope Zentulas of Bigor. He is a 17-year-old. Uh, he is feeling fine. Um, he is chaste, um, ambitious, greedy, and his education is that of a thrifty clerk, which is the, uh, eh, it's the second tier out of four of the stewardship sign. So it's decent. It's not great, but we can work with it. Um, he, uh, he comes, uh, in the, uh, comes with the, oh yeah. One other, um, uh, interesting trait is he is gay. Count Lope uh, does not swing for uh, for the team, despite having a female wife. Um, now this is um, this is this is a uh, you know medieval times. Um, most the, the the par for the course for um, people who were gay back then were to basically pretend like you weren't and go through the motions. So yes, he is technically married, uh, but he's not terribly happy uh, at that. Um, but he can't really express himself. That being said, if you reform a faith, you can actually reform a faith to say homosexuality is in. Double thumbs up. Um, but that such is not the case with the Catholic Church in 867 uh, AD. Um, now, our stats here. The... Um, uh, he's uh, not not that great of a diplomat, but a pretty darn decent um, uh, fighter with, uh, with a... Uh, 12 martial stat, um, have decent stewardship, um, decent intrigue, and um, eh, not the greatest of learning, but he's got a decent prowess. Prowess being your, uh, um, your, your physical fighting ability. Um, and we have two counties to our name, Bigor and Birn. Uh, so these two counties are our, uh, um, b belong to us. Um, The um, now we have one other thing to our name. We have a claim, a claim on the Duchy of Gascony. Um, now this basically says that we have the right to be the Duke of Gascony, but we kind of need to bring the military uh, to press our claim, uh, to to assert our the, that we should be the rightful holder of that title. Unfortunately, uh, we have uh, our, it is currently held by our liege. Duke Anso II, um, and he's uh, he's pretty powerful at the moment. Uh, we don't have the wherewithal, the troops, the the forces to challenge him directly. Um, so yeah, we can't really press that claim yet. But the um, we we I have plans. I do want to become a duke. Uh, so just um. Uh, just the the order of operations here. So from from order of um, lowest on the feudal totem pole to greatest, the lowest is a baron level, uh, and those are individuals that hold just a single holding. So for example, uh, Mayor Mayor Haramel here is a baron level title. Um, they're uh, they're they're so low on the t totem pole you can't even really play as them. Um, up from a baron is a count. A count rules one or more counties. Uh, so we, that is us, we are a count. Um, now up from a count is a duke. A duke uh, presides over a duchy which contains one or more counties within itself. Um, but the, du the duke isn't the top of the pecking order here in France. There is, above the duke is the king. The king 
presides over the entire kingdom, which in this case, West Fran uh, Francia, um, is the kingdom provide, uh, presided over by King Charles the Bald of West Francia. Um, so that's that's sort of the 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 pecking order um, here in in uh, with the medieval pecking order. So first step, yeah, we we kind of want to become a duke. Um, we would we would like to go even higher eventually, but um, duke is our first step um, because our two holdings are pretty 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 undeveloped uh, at the moment. Now, as far as um, as far as we go here, there's a couple other things that we can do. Uh, one of the things that the game is asking me to do is to choose a lifestyle. Now, the lifestyle here um, is essentially it's it's um, you can focus on one of the five different uh, skills here, um, and then within those different focuses, you can um, put points towards a specific skill tree or multiple skill trees if you want. Um, now. Normally, because we are educated in stewardship, we get a little bonus to our uh, rate of uh, experience gain for stewardship. However, we don't really have much territory to manage, so any bonuses we get for stewardship aren't really going to be that impactful. So I'm actually going to start us off with Marshall, because I see our uh, I see our, our uh, ourselves on the battlefield pretty uh, pretty um, pretty soon here. Um, so here we have three different um, uh, trees here, and actually three different foci. Uh, we got strategy focus, authority focus, and chivalry focus. Um, now you can mix and match here. You can take a, a one focus and then go down the, one of the other trees. Uh, but these things, as we gain more lifestyle experience, we unlock specific perks, and these give us bonuses um, that are in effect so long as our ruler is in charge. Um, now, as far as um, as far as our different things here, I think I might go. I might go for. Hmm. It's between strategy and chivalry. Um, chivalry focus is really really good, but so is strategy. But going into chivalry, is it always best to start with martial? It depends. It depends. Um, if, uh, I mean, if you're a bit more established, if you're starting out as a duke or as a king, you might not necessarily need um, martial as much, although that depends on what type of king or duke you are, because they might be envelop enveloped in wars pretty early too. But for us, for, for us as a little rinky-dink two-county count, we're going to be involved with a lot of... Uh, um, a, a lot of wars early on, so putting our focus into martial early on is probably going to be to the to the in our best interests. I'm going to go strategy focus. That gives us a plus three to martial, um, which helps us when we're leading troops um, get higher advantage, as well as um, increases the size of our levies. So there we go. Now we don't actually have any points to put into our different trees at the moment, uh, but we'll get there. We will certainly get there. But for the time being, I have a plus three to my martial skill, so we are now sitting at a 15, which is pretty darn good. Um, now then, the uh, so the next thing we want to do is take a look at our court and council. Uh, because a lot of people, um, um, you know, making sure we have the right people helping us out, our, basically our council is our advisors, uh, is going to make the big difference in how well we can govern our realm and how well we are protected from threats, both military and other. Now then, um, we, have our, uh, we have our wife here, uh, um, uh, Countess Uraka. Um, she, by the way, is is actually a pretty good wife. She is ambitious as well. She's honest. She's diligent. Um, she's got a level three uh, um, diplomacy education, and she has a congenial trait. She is quick. Quick is the lowest uh, level, but still good of the intelligence thing. So she's a little bit smarter than the average bear and has a chance to pass it down to our children. Speaking of, we did start the game with a single child, um, Estefania Lopez de Bern, um, who is literally just just born, um, like like literally like two seconds ago born. Um, so yeah, she she did not inherit her mother's uh, trait, but she is part of our family. Um, so yeah. 
Now then, as far as um, our wife goes, um, one of the good thing about having uh, good stats on your wife is that her she can assist us. Um, now, if she doesn't assist ruler, she gives us a little bit of a bonus across the board based on how good her different um, stats are. Uh, but we can also focus fire her effectiveness into a specific stats. And for now, I think court politics is going to be the, the correct answer here. Uh, because we're going to be calling on people to join our realm. And we want a little bit of an extra diplomatic uh, uh, edge here. I know, free era. It's excellent. Uh, now, we, I, you know, uh, the, the phrase that I always tout, uh, especially for when, you know, when doing a legacy challenge, is you want an heir and a spare. So having more kids is not a bad thing. And there, it normally would not be a problem because, I mean, he's 17, she's 17. Uh, they are both young and fertile. But again, he is not only chaste, but also gay. So he's like extra not interested in sleeping with his wife. Uh, that's not to say that he won't sleep with her, but they won't be popping out nearly as many kids as two uh, normally horny 17-year-olds would uh, in the same circumstance. Um, so then, the um, as far as uh, so as far as our council goes here, the. Um, uh, our bishop, um, the one person we can't replace is our bishop, uh, Rastlav, uh, because the pope actually is the one that uh, appoints us our bishops, and they serve for life. Um, no, no, there's no pleading with the Grim Reaper. The, you can hire a court physician to save you from some nasty wounds or nasty illnesses, and you can recover from them if you have a good doctor. But once you're dead, you're dead. No resurrecting here. Um, but, you know, the game gives you some sim second chances and sometimes it'll just, you know, you'll drop stone cold dead at the age of 45 from natural causes because it's medieval times and medicine isn't that good. <laughs> um, so, but one thing we, our bishop can do for us, each of our different um, uh, advisors here have special tasks that we can have them do. Um, and one of the things that um, we can have our bishop do is fabricate a claim. In order to c declare war on, on somebody and, and um, you know, claim some of their stuff, you need to have what's called a casus belli, uh, or cause for war. Um, at the moment, I don't have any claims with, that, with the exception of the claim on our duke, but we are not nearly, nearly uh, strong enough to challenge our duke directly. So we gotta we gotta gather power. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fabricate a claim on a county, um, and hmm, I, let's let's uh, let's start things with Armanac here. We'll start with uh, that because um, so he it's gonna in approximately uh, twenty months he will uh, at the cost of a fair amount of gold get a. Uh, um, a fair amount of uh, uh, get us a fake claim essentially which we can then press and go to war uh, for for that specific county um, which can hopefully increase our, um, uh, our our you know the number of titles that we're holding our income base our our troops and just generally make us more powerful now over here on our chancellor we have a really good chancellor bertrand here sitting at an 18 diplomacy i have no desire to replace bertrand um so um he can either focus on foreign affairs um sort of making things nicer for uh, you know getting us more prestige as well as uh increasing other our fellow vassals opinions um uh, whereas domestic affairs allows me to get uh, direct vassals, people who report to me, opinion up. Um, the as far as the um, as far as this goes, we're going to want to be on foreign affairs because we don't actually have that many vassals reporting to us directly. Uh, we actually only just have one random mayor as as our vassal, so we don't need our our master chancellor to work on them. Um, we can so we can turn their focus to, to uh, foreign affairs. Speaking of our one random mayor, Mayor Haramel, uh sitting here as our steward with a six stewardship. Yeah, that's 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 not acceptable. 
Um, but there are reasons why we wouldn't want to necessarily get rid of him. Not right away, anyway. We can replace him, but he'll get mad. Um, and there's there's a reason in the in my early build here why we don't want to make him mad. So, um, yeah, Mayor Mayor Haramel, would you like a caramel? Um, so we're gonna keep him doing his thing for the moment. But he he is not long. Well, I'm not say I say he's not long for this world. I'm not gonna kill him. I don't hate him. I just need to replace him with a better. Um, uh, better steward. I should specify this because in Crusader Kings, murdering somebody is absolutely a viable course of action if you want to get rid of them, but we don't need to do that. <laughs> uh, then we got our Marshal here, Ives, uh, at a 14. Not bad, not bad. Um, he can um, increase our levies uh, or help train our commanders, uh, basically our knights overseeing that. Um, I'm actually going to go train commanders for the moment for him. And then our spy master, Ermengarda. Ermengarda, it's a spy master. And unfortunately, it is a disloyal spy master. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's problematic. Uh, a disloyal spy master can aid others in stabbing you in the back. You, we don't want that. So we need to find ourselves a new spy master. So let's, uh, let's, let's go, um, Uh, let's go, uh, uh, let's, let, let's start recruiting some people. Let's get some people into our court. Now, one little trick here, one little, um, the, um, one little trick that we, that I found here to uh, bring people into our court here without having to shell out a lot of money is, um, uh, to, uh, look for people via marriage. So, Ermengarda is currently unmarried. But we can find her a spouse. And um, if we make it a matrilineal marriage, that spouse, once they marry her, will, uh, will come to our court. We can then employ them on our council. Um, so let's find someone, let's find someone good, some, someone actually good. Um, I do want to find a really high martial person like uh, Maroon here. Um, how are you, my friend? You are... You are a good marshal. Um, now, one thing to uh, keep in mind, marshal does not necessarily equate to prowess. Um, your, your, the, the, the skill in the art of warfare does not tr always translate into skill in the art of actually fighting on the battlefield. Ideally, we'd like someone who's both, who is both a really good marshal and a really good knight. Uh, let me scan through some of our high martial people. See if we can't find someone who's a who's good at both here. Um, so unfortunately, it does not tell you their uh, their prowess on the side thing here. Uh, 17, 17, 16, ooh, 16 and 9. 16 and 9. 16 and 1. 15 and 9, so, hmm, 16 and 9, no, you know what, I think I will forego that and just go with the 21 and not count on them as a knight, that's, that's perfectly fine by me, um, so we will, um, pull you in here, let's wait for them to arrive, all right, they have arrived. Also, uh, we, um, um, my, uh, I started the game married to her, but apparently we literally just got married. So we got the, the new marriage event, which is awesome because we can um, choose to either gain um, uh, a lot of prestige or some money. We need the money. The money is so much, so, so important right now. Um, right then. So now, now that we have that, we can go to our council and now we have ourselves a really, really good marshal. Skill 21. This gives us a lot of different bonuses and he will be exceptionally useful at his particular task. Um, now then, let's, let's find ourselves a, a, a new spy master. Now, spy masters can be male or female. Um, because you technically don't declare to the world who your spy master is, um, you can employ women because it's not, you know, like it, it, they, people aren't supposed to know who they are anyway. 
Um, so we can do the same thing, but do it in reverse. If we um, if we take, oh, let's say, for example, let's take uh, Bertrand here. Bertrand a, a, is, a, is a good guy and actually a good knight, too. Why don't we get you a, a, a lovely wife who is good at um, uh, stuff here? Now, we have a 19. Um, we have a couple 17s here, but we also have a 16 who is Basque. And that's actually pretty good because um, you have a 15 point uh, diplomacy uh, uh, penalty uh, for the um, for characters who are of a different culture. But we are Basque. She is Basque, so she won't dislike us. And having a loyal spy master is worth the extra points. Do I get loyalty from marrying her? Um, they they don't intrinsically like like us more, but they'll join my court and therefore I can use their services. Um, so let's send that proposal. There we go. And now, now we have a better spy master. Yep, so she likes us on the council. You know, I have a short reign penalty, but that applies to everybody just because I'm, I'm, uh, um, I, uh, I, I, um, you know, I just started ruling. So people are still getting used to the idea of me being in charge. Now, one other uh, position that we can um, one, uh, that we can bring in is um, a court physician. While they don't appear here, they are an important person nonetheless. And just like with the spy master, they can be uh, filled by a male or female. So let's uh, let's draw a, let's let's attract a female um, uh, court physician here. Um, who whom whom can I do here? Uh, Haramel. Oh, you don't. I can't. I can't order you to get a wife, because um, you are not a feudal ruler here. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Ives. Ives. Why don't you like me, Ives? You are ambitious and also ambitious. Yeah, ambitious people don't like other ambitious people because they're all trying to get there. Oh, and I just fired you from the council. So no, I'm not gonna get marry you, or get you married rather. Here, there's that foreign culture minus 15 I was talking about, but their spouse, that's it, fine. It's not as important with others as it is with the spy master. Um, so we will hire and we want learning, really, really good learning. Um, ooh, Amazonian, the Herculean, holy crap. Plus eight prowess, huge boosts to health, a plus 15 attraction. Man, can I marry her? I'd have to get rid of my wife for that, though. <laughs> um, yeah, powerful, healthy, and strong. Has a sublime female physique. Um, now, uh, Visigothic, are there any... Um, yeah, no, no high-learning Basque people. So, you know what? I think we're going to take her. And yeah, having her live forever is a good idea um, because then we have our doctor for a good long time. Um, so come on down. Uh, so we will send proposal. Excellent. All right, now what we do here is we go to, where is she? There she is. Right click, um, appoint as court physician, cost us 10 gold. There's also a decision that you can do to search for a physician, but it's a lot more expensive to do that. It's a lot cheaper just to invite them via marriage and then just appoint them for the 10. Ah, now speaking here, um, there's a couple other things that we can do here. We can invite knights um, uh, to visit our court. Um, and knights will are guaranteed to have a much higher um, level of um, uh, prestige to them. Yes, yes, there is a person in my court named Violent, um, and she's she's a uh, hunchbacked forest fighter. But yes, 
Ironically, she does not have any of the the more aggressive traits, although she does have a good martial and a good prowess. Uh, she, she'd definitely be one of my knights if I were allowed to uh, let have uh, women uh, be knights in our in our realm. Unfortunately, we, we are not able to. Um, but she will be useful nonetheless. Um, right then. I think you know what would be a good idea. Let's uh, let's let's we we're gonna need we have a lot of prestige right now. We're gonna need a little bit more, um, and a good way to get prestige early on is to call a hunt. Um, and since our character is fairly uh, fairly competent as far as our, our prowess goes, I think we'll we'll do pretty well. It's also a good way to lose stress. We don't have any stress right now. I don't think anyway. Um, uh, stress is something uh, I'll, we'll, we'll cover stress a little bit more, but we have good opportunities to get prestige. So let's sound the horn, pay 33 gold and uh, let's see how this goes. Because my next course of actions will really depend on how well this. Uh... Uh, excuse me. Oh, God. So I have a 9% chance of dying, um, but I don't want my new, um, I, I don't want my court physician to do something. Um, I would like the hunting trophy and I have a good court physician. So um, I, I'm going to call it here. If we just randomly die, um, <laughs> uh, I might need to reload because um, damn. Yeah, suddenly bears. Yes, hunting trophy. Now, what does that do for me? Um, ooh, an extra uh, trickle of uh, of prestige. We have we have a uh, we have a nice bearskin rug for the main hall, and we return home reinvigorated. So an extra one hundred and fifty that ends the hunt. Um, but it also gives us um, an extra monthly tick of, uh, yeah, I know. Well, I mean, she is the Amazonian trait. She could probably just break it over her knee. Just break it in half. And as a physician, she's like, eh, I'll just dissect it here. We'll make sausages for the campfire. But no, I, 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 uh, I fought the bear and I won. Um, right then, so let's uh, let's take a uh, let's take a look here. So with that extra um, um, thing in mind here, there's a few other things that I want to do. Um, so one thing I want to do is I want to get my crown authority up a level here. Um, this uh, basically allows me to extract more levies from my vassals uh, as well as revoke titles. That's not neither of those things. Um, are really going to be something I'm going to be using, but there's another reason for this. But it's going to cost us 130 um, of our prestige. We go to here to uh, succession laws. Um, so starting out, especially in the uh, 867 AD, most people have access to the worst um, uh, succession law in the game. Uh, hey, Wilkins! Um, and that's Confederate Partition, where all of your children, uh, your, upon your death, your titles get distributed evenly across all your um, children. That's not good for consolidating power and keeping it across generations. Um, hey, Mara. Um, so one, one of the nice things, and this is one of the reasons I like the Basque culture, is the Basque culture starts with uh, a couple of unique um, um, uh, improvements here. We have Visigothic codes. It allows us to enact right from the get-go um, high partition and equal law. Um, so meaning we could change our gender law to equality. Um, now the um, um, the other the other law that I want to change though is the um, succession law from uh, Confederate partition to high partition. Um, 
High partition allows us to make sure that our heir gets the lion's share of the titles. Um, they don't, it's not a single heir uh, thing, but you need to, um, in order to unlock the three uh, single heir um, succession laws, you need to have much higher tech. That's actually, that, that doesn't show up until later in the medieval era. So in the beginning of the game, nobody's really going to be able to have a single heir unless you literally only have a single eligible heir. Um, so keeping your titles together is going to be tricky in the early game, but that's how it's supposed to be. Um, so I'm going to spend 500 of our prestige here, um, to ca uh, pass high partition. And the other reason why I'm doing this right now is that you can only change your succession laws when all of your vassals, uh, like you. If, if a single vassal doesn't like you, they will object and you can't change your succession law. But we only have one vassal, and because I didn't rip him out of the council right away, he still likes us. So he's going to approve our succession. Yeah, no tanistry here. Um, but there's, there's ways to engineer it. So we're going to change law. Boom. High partition. Um... Now then, uh, we already invited the, uh, we already, oh, no, we didn't invite the knights. Did we invite the knights? I forgot if we invited the knights yet or not. Um, but regardless, now, now that we've passed the law, now, now I don't care if Mayor Haramel, who needs caramel, hates me or not. So let's find us a, 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 a real, um, um, a real steward, because we're going to need their prowess as well. Yeah, no, at this point in history, it's, I mean, the Basques are one of the few culture groups that gets early access to the equal gender law. And even then, you gotta, you have to buck the male-dominated, <coughs> excuse me, the male-dominated um, doctrine of the Catholic faith. So it's, uh, <coughs> it's, uh, it's, um, it's hard to get uh, true gender equality, but... It is possible. Um, right then. So the um, uh, right then. Let's let's get ourselves. Uh, so let's find another one of our female courtiers who hasn't uh, hasn't been married here. Philippa, you're yep twenty four unmarried. Um, a great spy master, but your natural your natural talents are nothing. So <laughs> that's fine. Matrilineal stewardship. Ooh. Raul, Raul with the twenty-one, come, come, come on down, my friend. We can use the real Stuart. Perfect. And now we go from a six stewardship to a twenty-one. Um, right then. So. Um, our steward is going to be very important to us for a number of different reasons. One, we are going to um, promote culture. Here's, so here's the reason. Um, so if we look at our cultural tab here, right here. Um, so we're in these two counties. We ourselves are um, our Basque culture, but the counties that we are in are Occitanian. Um, sort of a, you know, Southern French culture. So we are technically, to our own people, foreigners. Now, just to the south of us is the Basque culture, but it's tiny. It's just this little pocket here. Um, and it's under assault by uh, the, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the Moslems, um, our, our friends, the Umayyads, who are, are very Mayad and like to uh, do holy wars against uh, the Christians here. The, the uh, Christian faiths tend to push back and take over Spain um, in the 1066, but in the uh, 867, the, uh, the, the Muslim rulers have, the, uh, have the, the upper hand in Spain here. Um, but I don't want, uh, I don't want the Basque culture to get snuffed out, which is a very possibility. So we are going to wear our Basque culture proudly and tell our steward to start, uh, converting the culture of our, uh, counties over to Basque. We are going to, we are going to shape our people to be like us, 
adopt our customs, adopt our languages, and such. Um, so yeah, I, I just really, really like the Basque culture just in general. And it's nice to, to be sort of like a minority type um, and just sort of stake your claim and, and you know, uh, be, be proud of your culture no matter how often it gets under assault here. Yeah, I, I R I R L am not related to, you know, don't have any Basque in me. I am a European mutt through and through. Um, but that's, um, yeah, I, I just really like it. It was really nifty culture in uh, um, Crusader Kings 2 as well. Um, now, as far as uh, the rest of our court, um, let's, um, I'm going to have our spy master find secrets in our own. I just want to know if there are any of our um, court members that have some naughty secrets. I just want to know about them. I won't necessarily use it. Well, hello. While studying the tactics of ancient generals, I was astonished to learn about the exploits of Hannibal Bakar. During the Second Punic War, known as the Enemy of Rome, Hannibal's crowning achievement was the Battle of Cannae, where his army of roughly 50,000 outmaneuvered and encircled the larger 86,000-strong Roman army. Surrounded and unable to retreat, only 3,000 Romans survived the massacre. So based on this, uh, based on these readings, I can teach myself a... Uh, a trait here. So like Hannibal, I will annihilate my enemies and give myself the aggressive attacker. Um, normally you can... Eh. I know I know for a fact um, aggressive attacker lets me uh, um, uh, cause more enemy casualties. Um, let's see, this one is Logistin, um, which I think helps with supplies. And versatility is flexible leader, which hurts their uh, um, they, their thing. You know what? I think I think we're gonna go aggressive attacker. We wanna we want to cause more casualties. So, boom! Now we get the aggressive attacker uh, commander trait, which wins. We're uh, yeah, fatal casual enemy fatal casualties plus twenty five. We we cause more deaths when we fight, uh, which is good by me. We're 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 gonna want to decimate their armies here. Um, but we need a we need a fake claim in order to uh, uh, have justification for a war here. Um, I think that's about it for our stuff. Uh, no factions, no no schemes or hooks yet. Um, oh yeah, one of the things that I will want to be doing, uh, but I need to build up my money a little bit more, is uh, build up my military. Oh, that's the other thing I want to do here. Um, so the, uh, I'm in that. yeah, there we go. Uh, so the county that I'm, I have my eyes on is actually held by the Duke's son. Um, his, uh, I guess, uh, daddy wanted his son to practice being a ruler before he got to do the real thing. But, yeah, we, our Duke is not going to really be fond of us, uh, uh, for very long anyway. Um, eh, not best efforts, nothing going on. Um, very well, you know best. All right, nothing, nothing juicy is going on in, in there. Fair enough. Um, you know what? I could have you, I could have you look for secrets in my Duke, in my Duke's holding. Where is he, uh, where's, where's our Duke, um, out of? What's his primary? Um, it should say which of his realms. Um, Gascony. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, he is out of Albright. All right. So we're going to uh, we're gonna we're gonna try and dig up some secrets. Now it's not as easy to dig up secrets on your liege. Yeah, our bishop's a bit of a sinner, but he, I mean, he's got a virtue to con to, to 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 counteract it. He's honest, but he's gluttonous, so he he is he he will tell you exactly how much more, and uh, you know he won't say, oh no, I don't I don't I uh, I don't want a plate of fries. I'll just you know nibble off of some of yours. No, he'll say, give me five plates of fries. I will eat them because he's you know he's honest about it. 
Uh, I just wish his learning was higher because he's kind of a meh uh, bishop. Kind of meh. Uh, but we do want to sway him um, because if your bishop doesn't have a positive uh, view of you, your um, 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 realm uh, vassal, your, your um, church vassals will send all of your tax money to the Pope instead of to you. Um, and that's no good. Now, granted, we don't have any church vassals at the moment, so him not liking me is not really hurting us that much, but we'll be coming into having that uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah, um, I think our wife is, yeah, our, our wife is honest, too. She'll, she'll, she'll tell me to her face. All right, let's speed things up a little bit, because we do want to, um, um, uh, get to our, our juicy bit here. Oh, one of the other things we want to do is, let's get a men-at-arms regiment, and let's get some bowmen. Uh, so men-at-arms are, you have two different things. You've got, well, three different things. You've got levies. So these are your peasants. These are the, the, the random, you know, armed with pitchforks and just barely, no, you know, cheap weapons, um, you know, foot soldier, you know, cannon fodder. Um, and they come from our land. Um, then we have our knights. Uh, which, by the way, we need to, we need to improve our caliber of knights. Because our knights kind of suck right now. Did I actually? Yeah, I did assign our spy. Um, she's, she's checking things out in our liege's uh, domain. But let's get some better knights. We definitely want some better knights here. Um, we also want to do a uh, thing of bowmen. Uh, bowmen are good in uh, forests, taigas, and hills, and they are good against light, um, light footmen. Um, most of the lands that we're going to be conquering soon, um, although not Armagnac, uh, are actually going to be forested. So bowmen are a good investment, and they're, they're cheap enough. Uh, now, they will into, eat into our money a little bit, but that's okay. Actually, I'll hold off on creating them just yet. We're not quite ready. Uh, what I do want to do is um, let's let's find our other female courtiers. Uh, Violent here. Um, let's find let's have her find us a uh, a, a, a high prowess husband. Uh, now again, unfortunately, I cannot search by prowess specific. Ooh, hey, there we go. Also, who are you that you have so many claims? Not that we can press any of these. Yeah, these are. Yeah, you you are. Uh, you, I I can't. I will not have the military oop, oop, muster to press these claims. Um, let's see. All right, so we have a ten. Let's see if we can go better than ten. Five, a twelve, lone here. I think actually, I think twelve's about as good as we're gonna get here. So alone, come on down. And now Lone is one of our best knights, so they will join us as as a knight. Walls of Pow. The delegation of Pow slowly files out of my private chambers. Long meeting finally over. The petitioners beg for money to repair the crumbling walls of the holding and have invoked my lordly duty to help them. I drum my fingers on the table, pondering whether to send them the funds. Good fortifications are hideously expensive. Of course, if the walls are crumbling anyway, I could always direct their existing stipend to more personal matters. Um, so here's an in interesting thing. Um, we gain stress... Um, because we are, um, we are, we are, um, um, we're, we're, um, greedy. We don't like spending money. Um, so if we go against our thing here, um, if we go against our personality, we will gain some stress. That doesn't prevent us from choosing that. Um, but there are ramifications if stress builds up too much. Meanwhile, you know what? I like the gold. I want the gold right now. So I don't, screw the crumbling walls. I want fifty gold. We we have we have things to buy. We have we we have a claim coming up that's going to be very expensive. We have troops to raise. We we need the money. Um. So yeah, 
We'll worry about the walls later. We'll just use our forces to drive people away from the walls, so we don't have to worry about the walls. Um, right then, let's press on. Let's uh, let's get that uh, ba band of bowmen that we were talking about before. Find secrets. Wow, no secrets in the Dukes. All right, well, then we'll just put her on defense. Larissa, how's it going? Complication, uh, compliments. How's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Um, to uh, make him um, more susceptible in my attempts to approach him, we can compliment him. All right, so we can compliment him on his empathy and kind heart, relentless courage, soaring ambition, or just keep it short and professional. Um, you know what? I'm going to say empathy and kind heart. Um, although soaring ambition would be a good one, too, because gluttonous and greedy, um, those, those are soaring ambition as well. I'm going to go soaring ambition. All right, he liked it. So he gains 10 opinion and um, our sway scheme gains progress. Excellent. All right, and now he likes us. He really, really likes us. So now he is uh, supporting us. Um, do we have any other courtiers um, who can um, magnet uh, attract some um, Urshan? Oh yeah, she's, um, she's our physician. Bertrand, Philippa already, I already used Philippa. Ermengerda already got used. Alustia, yep. And then I don't think we're going to attract anyone to a nun. Um, no, people, you know, she's none too interested in uh, a marriage because, well, she's a nun. Um, so can't use her. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it. You might end up as one of my heirs. The challenge. Well, I'm sparring with one of my soldiers with sweat beating on my forehead when I experience the uncanny sensation of being watched. Looking over my shoulder, I spot Marshal Moron, uh, Moron eyeing me while nonchalantly swinging his axe back and forth. My count, Moron's wo uh, words boom across the courtyard. Would you not prefer to test your skills against me instead? Um, yes, I do, because I know you're bad at fighting. You're good at martial, you're just bad at fighting. Um, and we have a good doctor, so I can risk the wounded. I hope we don't lose this. Oh, well, we'd have to lose that anyway. Challenge exception. Bloody humiliation. Oh, no. Well, shoot. And he just decided to wound me anyway. Well, that's going to be problematic because I need, uh, I needed that, uh, I needed that prestige, um, to declare war, you bastard. Yeah, see it done, and now we're in debt. Um, we'll start fabricating on the next county here. But yeah, that was, that was a, I know, uh, unfortunately that didn't label him as criminal for that. Now I can't declare war when I am dead, but I, I will, I will be getting out of debt shortly here. Um, the other problem is if you declare war without enough prestige, uh, you get a huge penalty. Um, how soon can I go on another hunt? I mean, not that I have the money for that. Uh, I could use a little bit more... If I get in a little more piety, I can cash that out for a gift from the, uh, um, novice physician. Our physician gets better. Excellent. Um, ooh, another, another commander trait. Nice. All right, I'll take this. 
Uh, while studying the tactics of ancient generals, I was inspired to learn uh, about Constantine's victory at the Battle of Milglin Bridge. The night before the battle, Constantine dreamed that victory would be granted uh, if he painted Shiro, a symbol of Christ, on his soldiers' shields. He did exactly that, and the next day he overran the forces of the usurper Maxentius, who fell into the Tiber River and drowned. All right, Holy Warrior, not going to be useful to us because we're we're not fighting the infidels, at least not yet. Um, this one, Forder to cross the river. Not too many rivers to worry about. Uh, flexible Leader, yes, Flexible Leader. We'll take Flexible Leader. That uh, lowers the defenses of our leader. I do want to get rid of this Wounded trait um, before I go too much to war. You can see on our we can see the wound that we can see the, the the wound that he gave me right here right across our face bastard oh chi gotcha or kai rather uh my demesna these two right now at the moment i'm i have a claim on armanac uh i'm just waiting for gold and prestige to to come in and also for my wound to heal before we press that because i would very much like to press that but because of a dishonorable duelist um i uh and a bad roll i had a, i had a i had a um i you know i had a 30 percent chance of uh of, of getting that and i got that i would have preferred to have the uh the better duel but yeah such as that. Uh, I'm just waiting for my piety to hit 250 so that I can go ask the Pope for a, uh, a tax refund, essentially. Welcome back, wife unit. Now it makes up for me winning against the bear earlier. Impression twice made. Um, another feast in the honor of, oh, um, so our liege is holding a feast. Neither of us are in the Duke's best grace, as he points out, but if we were to provide a spectacular show with the feast, we might improve our standing with him. Uh, no, I ain't providing gold for crap, uh, and it causes us stress because we're greedy. Um, spend 150? Nope, I can only think of small, let's focus on the small things. Yeah, because that's free. Oh, hey, new lifestyle perk. Stalwart leader. So this improves our prowess by four. We probably could have used that, but also reduces the risk of commanding army. So we're less likely to get injured slash killed slash etc. Um, so that will help us out um, on the on the battlefield. Now, if my uh, lost in thought, oh, our little girl's growing up. My daughter and her and heir, Estefania, is an unusually calm child. When the other children play their wild games, Estefania often retraws to some silent corner. She does not speak a lot, and I can tell she is always thinking about something. Uh, so she gains the pensive trait. Uh, different, um, different children can get different childhood traits, and then that makes them predisposed to a couple of different um, types of education. Um, I'll have to take a look at what Pensive does. Once she gets a little older, I'll be able to choose her uh, type of education. All right, all right. We're at uh, we're at Piety. Uh, we're at we're at over 250 Piety. So um, we can ask our head of faith for gold, please. And he gives us a hundred gold, and we needed that hundred gold. Um, can we go on another hunt? January 19... Oh, two more years for that. We could hold a feast. Um, for 50... Yeah, no, that doesn't give us... That doesn't give us uh, prestige. Feast does not give us prestige. We need another hunt. Um, pilgrimage? But that's... I think that's... Pi yeah, it's piety. Hmm. I might just take the bite. Uh, might might bite the bullet here and go into the negatives for for the war here. Hmm. He has some. He has a friend. Similar costs us a hundred prestige. Yeah, we get a, a penalty to our fame by doing this, so it's not going to help our uh, 
our, our dynasty grow in fame as much as a regular successful war would? But yeah, let's 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 give it a shot. Three um, 379 between these two combined 379. Hmm. I just wish there was another way to get a burst of prestige. That duel really, really sucked. Because normally I would have enough prestige at this point. Uh, I mean, I could wait for another event, but there's no guarantees. Don't do it. It costs too much. Yeah. But I want that extra county. And also, I don't want um, I don't want our 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 count here to I don't want his father to die and have him become our duke because then we'd have to go on again go against all of the duke's holdings at once and well then we can't nab that quite as easily. 